how to paint with straight lines in Photoshop. It's really easy, PC or Mac, and this is how to do it. It does require a little bit of setup before you actually create your brushes. First thing to do, just go over here and rectangle tool. Create a rectangle, and I'm applying it as a shape, and the reason for that is I can delete the background. I'm not applying it onto this layer at the moment. So now this creates a completely new layer. You can see over here in layers, all the panels I'll be using in this can be found here. With this, you can now delete the background. Over here, just select the background here, delete it, or simply hide it. You can always bring it back. Didn't go over here and rectangle the marquee tool. Now with this selected, I can then just drag down here with the selection. Make certain it's about even there. So I'm just going for a very narrow band of that shape. Now the shape's color is blue. It could be any color, but I'm going with blue in this. So once you've got that, you can now define it as a pattern. So edit and then go to define pattern. And that will store that in the patterns panel in Photoshop. So this line is stored away as a design that you can use in other projects, not just in this one. So click OK. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to remove the selection, select and deselect, so that's gone. And also, I'm going to hide that now, I don't need that anymore. I've gone back to the background layer, and now what you need to do is go over here to the brushes. I'm using the brush tool, you could use other tools as well, does accept textures. So brush tool, with that selected, I can now go to the brush settings. So brush settings here, and I can go down here, and this is the key one, texture. Just make certain it's set to on, and you can see I've already got one here. However, the one I've just created was this one. So just select that one. Whenever you add a pattern, it's always added to the end. So with this, got it here. Should say it's added to the one past the current selected one. Okay, so you've got it here. Now with that, you can modify the scale. You can also modify brightness, etc. So let's just quickly apply it. So I'm just gonna apply it now. I've got green as the color here for the brush and you can see it there. Well, if the settings are not exactly right, you won't get that. So let's just tweak the settings here. Now you can see if you change brightness, it will change it subtly. You've got a little preview here, which is very useful. Also, you can modify the contrast. So you change the contrast and you'll see you get different results. Also, you can modify the depth. Now, if you move the depth beyond about 6%, you will see the actual brush coming through, which you might want. It creates an interesting design like that, which is not what I want in this case. What I want to do is set the depth to about 6%, I would say. You can reduce it down so it goes fade, uh, fades away there. So I'd say about 6%, 5%, yeah, something like that. Also, set height and texture each tip. And now when you apply it, you get this. Now it's using the pattern. <clears throat> so the gap you see here is based on that selection that I created. So if you made the selection a bit wider, you would get bigger gaps <clears throat> in your brush stroke. Okay. What you can then do is you can go up here and you can modify the, bright, the actual texture again to a different texture. And I'm going to go with going the other way, horizontally, because you can create something exactly the same as well. So let's just go again, let's just undo this and go back to this one. Now it's a shape and I can just bring it back very quickly. You of course could create it again, you don't have to of course use this one, but you can then just simply rotate it and then move it there and I'm just gonna drag it across like that. Again, what you can do, press return, make sure you press return, Go here to the rectangular marquee tool and then just click and drag. Now I'm again you can see now I've got a bit of space. So I've got space between that and that and that. You could of course make it a bit closer, up to you. You can just fine-tune it as you want for your lines. Obviously, a different result, that will result in a different result to something like that. So I'm just doing it about there. I think that's about right, about sort of equal size. And you can just judge it obviously by eye. So now once you've done that, 
you can then define this as a pattern. So edit, and then go down here again to define pattern. So that can be stored away in your patterns again. Now the patterns, if you want, window and patterns. But I'm gonna use them not from there, but from the textures, and that's here. So again, I need this one, the brush tool. Brush tool then selected, go over here to texture. Now, I'm using this one, but you can use other things to tweak it as well. There's lots of other options, color dynamics, etc. Quite useful, but texture here. So just go here and changing that one, but I can change this as well. So just click here and now you can see you've got that. You've got horizontal. And let's just remove this now. I don't want that one. And I also don't want the selection. Again, brush tool and apply it. And you can see now I get this effect. It's a lovely line effect. And I'm applying it just to this part of the image. And you could also create different scales. Maybe let's just go here, just increase the scale and apply again. You can see you could then build up maybe different size of those lines. Just reduce it down and apply again. And you get very thin lines. And you can see you could build up quite a complex design using the different scale here. Also, what you can do, you can, of course, apply it with the other one. So you can combine it. So this moment, I've got obviously horizontal lines. Well, I can just go click here and I've got that, that one. And I can then go here again and I can see, I can apply it here. Maybe just make it slightly bigger, the scale. Let's just increase that because it was a bit too small, a bit hard to see. And then you can get this effect. You get a grid effect from those lines as well. Or maybe, because the great thing about this is you've got green here for the horizontal, but you could go over here, change the color. Let's just go for say an orange or red or whatever and apply again. You now get a combination of orange and green for your grid using this brush approach. So let's just undo. Let's just undo those and I'm just gonna remove them all now. What you can also do is you can apply it on a layer. So as that, I can go over here, here's my layers panel, and I can then go down to the bottom and I can just click this little plus. That creates a new layer. I can now apply my brush stroke to that. And I'm gonna use orange again, perfectly reasonable, and apply like that. So I can fill the whole screen or just part of this, and I can now move it. So I go over here to the move tool, with this selected, I can then drag this around, reposition it, hold down the alter option key, and you can then duplicate this design. Or if you don't want to do that, go to layer and duplicate. You can also apply effects to it as well. Maybe convert it to a smart object via a layer and smart object, apply smart filters so you could tweak all the different settings for your lines there. But also what you can do is you can go over here to layers with this selected, the key thing there, Go down to the bottom, effects. Just click there and bevel emboss. So bevel emboss, you can see now, change the depth there. And as you do that, you get different design there. And then maybe change the angle. Maybe you decide, let's go for a drop shadow instead. Get this effect. Let's go down there. Maybe that's a bit too intense. Maybe change the spread, size, and so on. Create a variety of different line designs using this approach. And again, these lines can be distorted, modified, filter, and then maybe go down to distort and wave, say. And then with that, you can change the wavelength, go amplitude there, and click OK to create a lovely, weird and wonderful, distorted line design very quickly in Photoshop. OK, let's just delete that one. Obviously, you've got here this rectangle here, and I can bring this back again. Maybe you want to create a slightly more complex design now you don't have to have exactly, let's just move that right there. You can, let's just go over here again to this line tool, the rectangle tool, and create another one. Maybe go for a very thin one, so you can create slightly different line designs. So let's just go here, let's just drag that down. And you can see now you've got this design instead. Exactly the same as before, go over here, rectangle marquee tool, select that, and again drag over there, and you can create as obviously wide as you want, but I'm just gonna go for about there, something like that. Exactly the same as before. What you can do, hide the background. Make certain it's transparent so you can see through it. That's the key thing. And then just go here, edit, and then down to define pattern again. And you've got this pattern 
So click OK, and then you can use that line design in your brushes. You could also go and apply some effects maybe to it. Maybe use effects on these to create some interesting, maybe shadows directly inside the actual brush as well. Okay, let's just get rid of that one, that one, don't want that anymore, and bring that back again. Now I can go select and deselect. Instead of using that just single line, I can now go here. So brush settings, again, go over here to the brush tool. And you can use other tools as well. Some accept texture, some don't. Some accept it, but they don't seem to do much. Though there may be different settings to create different effects with those brushes. It's quite possible. Okay, again, just go here. And there you can see now you've got the two line one there. And then you can see this. So again, go here to the brush tool. And you can see now you get this line effect instead. And again, you can change the colors. So let's go for maybe blue. Now, unfortunately, you'll notice one thing. When you're applying it, there's no way of shifting. There's no offset feature in here. All you've got is scaling. Also, there's no angle, which is the reason why I created, obviously, the ones that are horizontal as well as vertical, because unfortunately, there is no texture and scale, rotate, and all sort of shear even feature, as well as offset. It'd be really nice if they added that, but it's not available. So you can apply it like this, and of course, again, you can modify it, go to blur, apply a blur effect, so maybe not that extreme, maybe go for about five or six, eight, I'm just gonna go with that, and then again, you can apply your brush stroke to that on top of that, to create all kinds of lovely designs using this approach. Also, color dynamics. So color dynamics, let's just apply there. And you can see then as you apply your brush, and let's just go back to more, that's that one texture. I think probably better to go this one. So this line, and you can see then as you apply it, you get these lovely blobs of color appear in it. And you can modify this, the color dynamics. There's lots of options here, hue jitter, saturation jitter, brightness jitter, and also purity. So you can modify those. Apply per tip, you can change that. You can see apply then, you get lovely blue. Then click again, you get a lovely green. Click again, you're black. Obviously it's random. Just gonna apply it. So you can see very rapidly, you can fill the entire screen with different color lines, if that's what you want. And obviously you can use other things as well. There's also scattering. So scattering, let's just turn that on. Change the scattering. And you can see then it's spread. So let's just apply it and you'll get different colors and different patches. Now it doesn't move the line. You notice the line doesn't change alignment in any particular way. You're only just getting different colors in different places. So scattering, just change that. And you can see you modify the count, but you get exactly the same thing. You still got lines, but the colors, all those sorts of things are all changing all over the place. Okay, so you've got this. What else can you do with it? Well, a really good thing is you can apply it also to images. It's obviously not going to be just brilliant to create in weird and wonderful grids like this, which I think they're okay. But you can also, of course, apply it to an image as well. So this time, let's just set all these things back. I don't want scattering and I don't want the color dynamics. And I'm just going to go for, say, black. So you might want to add lines across an image, maybe thin lines. So let's just apply these lines. You can see now, apply this like that and you can create a very interesting sort of line design like that on top of any image. Also, what you can do, you can go over here, opacity. You might not want it to be applied at 100%. It doesn't have to be 100%. Maybe go for 36 or 30, say 30%. So then you just get faded lines. You can do exactly the same as before. You can always go and add a layer. So add a layer and then put it those onto a layer, which is on top of the image. And then of course you can tweak it in other ways, not just fixed to these straight lines. So let's just undo that. Now I'm applying it in black. Let's just change color. So you can go for green and I'm gonna increase opacity back to 100%. So let's put it there. But you've also got blending modes. So you don't have to apply it just in normal. So just go down here to difference, apply it. And you can see then as you add it, you get this lovely weird and wonderful difference effect on top of obviously whatever image you've got. So now I'm applying it obviously there. And also you can change the color. Let's go for a red. 
and click there and you can see then as you apply it you can get a really quite surreal looking image which of course you can still then modify with effects all these sort of things again you could apply it on different layers and also much much more now say you want thin lines i've been creating these lines that are quite thick well what you need to do just go back here let's just undo these so instead of that thick line you can go here to rectangle tool exact same as before so let's just create a very very thin line something like that very very tiny there again it's set in blue it could be green etc exactly the same as before let's just go over here and rectangle the marquee tool this time i'm going to create a slightly bigger so it's going to be a bit of a gap between now so you can see now this is a lot bigger than the actual shape itself so now got that all selected like that again hide it you've got the transparency then you can go here and then edit and down to define pattern so define pattern and now you can see quite a gap there so click ok so the same let's just go back now to this image just go again to the brush settings and also select the brush tool so there's a brush tool selected go to texture and then select that actual pattern we just created that very thin one there so that one there and now you can see there's quite a gap between it and that's the way to create the gap if you're applying the brush stroke you can apply it just create thin lines and now apply it. and you can see now you get this lovely line grid across the image which you can still tweak you can still tweak the scale so now it doesn't reduce the size it still applies across the whole there and you can see as you apply it like that maybe again change it to different blend modes maybe lighten let's just go with lighten just try that and you can see you get that result which you can apply obviously continuously to this using different scale settings and i'm just going to reduce it down and lines like that so you can see a variety of different designs can all be created using just a simple line that's been defined as a pattern in photoshop and you can tweak it of course in many other ways you don't have to use just a line that is one single color maybe use a gradient maybe use a line that's made up of lots of lines to create some very really weird sort of unusual gaps in in the actual image when you're applying so instead of this line effect you could create with sort of like maybe a dot dash approach using different variations of that line there whole variety of different designs in photoshop using line brushes hope you found this of interest any questions thoughts about this in obviously the comments below always great to hear from you also please a like or dislike also please subscribe to the channel Always have new videos about Photoshop all the time. Bye.